see what's yeah. going on because it, it, it's real easy in radio. You see it all the time. And I'm sure you know this too. Uh, you see a lot of people just creating hot takes and, yeah, and there's really sure. no analysis to that. So it, it's always important to just do homework. And I tell you what, it pays off in the end, man. So I, I really appreciate that. And, and on that note, you know, I know you, you were having some, some not difficulty, but you know, we we're scheduling around because you're coaching and you've talked about coaching on the podcast. So, you know, I'm just curious, you know, why, why do you coach first of all? And second of all, do you feel like that gives you an advantage over, you know, this massive media blogosphere that we're all treading through? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, you know, so big reason for me coaching, uh, you know, football when I was younger, it saved my life. I, I felt yeah. like if it wasn't for football, if it wasn't for my coaches in high school, I, I don't know where I would be in life. Same. And so that was one of the big reasons I got into coaching. And so even though as I was coaching, I was still playing football. I was a cornerback. Um, I was playing in the developmental league. And, uh, you know, my career had ended back in 2015. I tore my ACL, uh, <sighs> coming off one of my best seasons yet as an all-pro. And, you know, I tell you what, you, you try to figure out what am I doing after football? You know, a lot of people come back from an ACL. You know, not not everybody is blessed to come back like Adrian Peterson did after he ruptured his ACL, MCL, PCL, uh, every ligament. But uh, for me, I had to find an outlet. And so really what got me through a lot of my physical therapy was listening to sports radio, listening to podcasts. Mm. And you know what? I do this stuff all the time. And, you know, I think it relates with every 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 man, every, you know, every young boy in this country and even some females out there that, you know, sometimes you get you up the weekend, you have all the games that happen and the first thing, you know, when, when kids go to school, you know, a lot of times I remember when I was in high school, I would talk with my boys about, hey man, you see this game yesterday, you know, we we talk sports all the time. Like you go to the barber shop, you talk sports. Uh, you just have, you know, sports is a, is a constant that connects every single one of us. So I started getting into radio and I started doing podcasts. I started off by doing my own podcast. Uh, covering the NFL, covering sports in general. Uh, but for me, my expertise lies in football. So I had to kind of find my passion for that. And so really just kind of hard work, man, just kind of getting on there and, you know, having a lot of connections in the sports world and, and just putting my voice out there. You know, you never know who's listening, you know. So I, I always encourage anybody who's starting up a podcast that, you know, hey, take it seriously, produce what you can. You know, quality is always important, uh, but be authentic, be you. Don't You know, you can tell if somebody is somebody that they're not the first five minutes you listen to them on a podcast or a radio show. You can tell if they're putting on a persona. Um, but the biggest thing, too, like I said, I, I coach these kids because I know how valuable my coaches were for me. You know, I hold them accountable. I try to teach them. And I still get to experience my love for the game by seeing it through them. And to me, that's always important. So, it, you know, this time of the year where you have high school football going on yep. and, uh, you know, got the NFL season, college football starting up, and then you have to do all this media coverage. You know, a lot of my days are 4.30 in the morning to about 10.30 at night. And, uh, you know what, I, I wouldn't change it for the world. It's, uh, it, you know, it's definitely it, it's made me a lot stronger as an individual because you got to power through some things, you know. So the fact that you were willing to kind of accommodate my schedule a little bit to make this happen, man, uh, means a lot to me, and, and I definitely appreciate that. Yeah, no worries, man. It, uh, plus, I, I I know you're leaving it out, but it's also fun to yell at some kids. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? We, we had, a, we had a, uh, our first high school game starts off this week, and we. We travel to Colorado Springs on Saturday and, uh, you know, working with my defensive backs. You know, it's Tackle Tuesday today, so we got to figure out, you know, obviously uh, bringing it together because we, if we can't tackle in practice, we're not going to tackle in the game. I tell you, it was the most ugliest session I've ever had. I told every one of my players, I was mad at them. I said, you know what, I would trade all of you right now for a Klondike bar just because, it, you know, <laughs> it, it was absolutely porous. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, no matter how hard I get on my kids, I tell all of them, you know, hey, I love you, but we've got to have a better practice tomorrow. we got to come ready to go. And so, you know, that's the biggest thing, too. And, uh, you know, high school sports, you know, you, you don't see a lot of participation much anymore, which really concerns it's me. It's changing. Um, but that's a different subject for a different day. Yeah, definitely. We can definitely go on that for all day. But um, so my last question for you, you know, it's a little bit more personal, but um, you did mention kind of powering through things. And, you know, uh, your pinned tweet, you know, you talk about losing your brother, you know, to the opioid crisis and stuff like that. And first of all, man, thank you for, you know, really sharing, you know, something like that that's really real and personal. It takes a lot yeah. of courage to do that. But I'm just curious, you know, do you, do you have any advice for anyone else who, you know, might be going through a similar, you know, tragedy with a loved one or something along those lines? And second of all, you know, how does that still kind of drive you to this day? 
Oh, man, yeah, that's a great question. You know, uh, anytime something tragic happens in, in any of our lives, we all have that moment where we just feel like, like, is what I'm doing, is it worth it? Like, what yeah. what am I meant to be doing here? And you have questions like, should I have done more? Uh, you know, one thing I've learned is you can't get into the what if game or I should have done this. It's not good to should all over yourself. That's, that's what I like to say to my students. <laughs> um, but the biggest thing is, you know, just be, you know, I, I'm a big believer in being kind to everybody. You know, I, uh, you know, I have a lot of people on Twitter that reach out to me all the time. And, you know, I, you know, with 10,000 something followers and just so many different tweets that happen every day, I try to block out a piece of time of my day to just go through and respond to everybody and not act like no matter what I do, no matter how big my platform is, I want to interact with everybody. I want to make everybody feel just as involved because I think, you know, without them, I wouldn't be doing anything that I've done. But through personal tragedy, you know, like I said, you know, last year, uh, you know, lost my brother to uh, drugs and alcohol. One of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my life was see my brother in a casket. Uh, and then obviously this past summer, too, you know, we lost my brother in a lot of suicide. So, uh, you uh, know, just I, I've been through a lot of stuff. And, uh, you know, I like to feel like I'm, I'm a very resilient human being. All this stuff drives me. But, you know, one of the things that I do is I, I try to feel like I'm taking them with me. You know, my brother, my brother-in-law, mm-hmm. like whatever I'm doing, I like to pretend that, you know, they didn't get to experience this. So I'm taking them with me on this journey. So I take my brother with me everywhere I go. I got his dog tags. You know, my brother and I always have, you know, kind of a shirt, you know, uh, a light blue covered shirt that I always carry with me as well. And so anything I do, I like to think that they're part of it. Um, But, you know, like I said, I think the biggest thing that we need in this world, regardless of where we come from, what, you know, what tragedies we go through, the biggest thing we need is kindness. And I think being kind to everybody, and you see on social media, you see it all the time. There's just a lot of vile toxicity, a lot of people just being, you know, mad at other people, degrading other people. Like, I'm not all for that. You know, I love everybody, even the people that don't like me, even the people that, you know, send me hate mail. I love it. Like, I love them too, because, you know, without them, you know, I don't have an audience. And so, you know, my biggest thing is be kind to everybody and take time to listen. Like, that's the most important thing. I've learned that it's important. It's more important to listen uh, more than it is to speak. You know, be observant of like those around you. But, you know, I'd say the biggest message, be kind to everybody um, and and listen to what their story is. Because even though other people's, you know, they're in different places in their life, we have a duty, I feel like, on, on this earth to impact others in a positive way. Yeah, man, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate that. And I'm sure, you know, there's going to be other people who appreciate it and need to hear it. So thank you for that. Uh, before I let you go, yeah, before I let you go, go ahead and, you know, plug your social channels a little bit more so, you know, people can know where to find you and where to find the Locked On Broncos podcast. Yeah, if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, you guys can follow me at Cody Rourke NFL. Just shoot me a follow. Send me a message. If I'm not following you back, I'll be happy to follow everybody back. Uh, that wants to be followed back. I try to get to everybody. Um, but, yeah, Lockdown Broncos, like I said, is a daily podcast on the Denver Broncos. We go through the news, analysis, and insight on all things happening with the orange and blue. You can expect <laughs> a podcast every single day on all of your podcast-providing platforms. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. You have a great rest of your week. Good luck on Saturday. Give them hell. And keep keep working, man. Awesome, man. I appreciate it and uh, respect a lot about what you're doing, man. Keep up the hard work and, uh, you know, I appreciate that. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. But, yeah, man, so that was Cody. Shout out to him. Lockdown Broncos podcast. My favorite part was really the back end, talking about his life and kind of what he's doing and working through. Yeah, that was the most interesting part. Like, it was... It's cool to talk football. We all have our aspirations, but to get into the nitty gritty of it, like yo, play football, tore my ACL, and it's like I was thinking about Hard Knocks and Princeton Buckner, the D line coach for the Raiders, and about he said football has a hundred percent retirement rate. <clears throat> Everybody got a tombstone on the death date for when they got to stop playing football. You never know what it is; it just happens. And yeah, man. Yeah. So, like the fact that he parlayed all that to what he's doing, that was cool. And even just the part he shared about, you know, dealing with, you know, his brother's suicide and, you know, his brother's, you know, accidental OD, like saying that he kind of carries them with him and he has a shirt that he keeps in his suitcase and, you know, he envisions himself, he envisions them being in the press box with him. That's some real, you know, p- powerful shit. And that's kind of what this podcast is like. It's balancing the touchdowns in life with real life 
tangents on business and culture and and turnovers sometimes. Yeah. But so on that note, um I don't know where our Chiefs guest our, our chief guest is, but just I like guess the we Chiefs can ta- to not show up in big moments. I literally needed. told him that. I was like, Y'all are leaving me hanging like Andy Reid in the divisional round. Y'all are leaving me hanging like Andy Reid in the fourth quarter of a championship game. But so on that note, we got about five minutes to stall so we can before our next guest, so we can go ahead and talk about the Chiefs. Um do we have to? They added LaShawn McCoy. Is that a touchdown or is that a turnover? Um, it's a touchdown. They have a they have a legitimate running back. As long as he's not like C J Spiller on the Chiefs, it's a touchdown. If he's anything like Philly, if he's anything like Shady McCoy that was in Buffalo to start, I don't think we're getting that Shady McCoy. Back. I think there's a there's a there's a little bit of that Shady McCoy left. So I think in this offense with Andy Reid, he could go for 1,200 yards. He could pull an Adrian Peterson. I don't know about that. Uh, I'd say 800. I'd say 1,200. I'd say him and Williams could both get 800, 900. I say, nah, I think Williams is going to have more receiving yards and rushing yards. I would say he'll have about 1,200 rushing yards and like six touchdowns. If they make him the full-time back, like – He'll still be averaging close to four. I don't think he's going to run. I don't think they're going to run the ball like that. And I don't think he's going to run the ball. I think they're going to okay, use fine. him I'll go, more. I'll go total I think yards. I could say, yeah, I could see, yards. Okay, I agree with that. I could see that happening. I sure. say he'll get about 11. I could for sure see that happen. He'll get about 1,000 rush yards, 1,100. And he may get like 100 rushing yards off like a screen. I don't see him being the receiving threat of that team. And on that note, what what is the backup plan if Mahomes isn't Mahomes again or isn't as great as he was and surprising as he was last year? Bro, their receiving group got better. Yeah, they lost their Chris Their DBs Conley. didn't. Their How, defense is kind of in a soft reset their pass again rush is better. for the like pass a third rush, year. The pass rush is better. Their run defense is going to be better with Frank Clark. Um, I think I agree with that. Emmanuel Oak was a good role player. And it's a 4-3 defense now. It's not a 3-4. So, I think you'll see more So, the backup plan is run the ball on defense, is what you're saying. I think you'll see even more passing from Patrick Mahomes this year. But I'm saying if 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 that doesn't work, if he throws more picks and has turned the ball over... If he reverts at all, are the do the Chiefs have a chance? I guess is what I'm saying. The Chiefs are. Does he have to be an MVP caliber player again for the Chiefs to be a contender again? I think he had MVP stats, but I think he's barely eclipsing what he's going to be as a quarterback. So I think he'll be better. The stats won't look the same, but I think it it won't be as much on him. Look who decided to show up. <laughs> All right, man. We got Mikhail in the house, resident Chiefs fan of the Good News Sports. You got five minutes, man. T- t- tell us why the Chiefs are going to win the AFC West. By the way, I said the Sean McCoy. Can I get some headphones? Just look at you. Oh, here you go. There you go. The Sean McCoy is going to. I said the Sean McCoy is going to get like twelve hundred total. Rushing or total yards, twelve hundred, uh, at he, least a thousand rushing. He might not even get that many because we got Damian Williams well, who finished I think he, well. I think he's going to get more. Uh, Williams is going to get more receiving yards. But yeah, man, t- tell me how the Chiefs win the AFC West again. So how the Chiefs win the AFC West is, uh, to be honest, I think every team around the Chiefs in the division has gotten. Maybe they haven't improved, I would say. I wasn't going to say has gotten worse. But I think with the Chargers, uh, you lose. If Melvin Gordon doesn't come back, that's that hurts. You know, he's one of the top five running backs, top six running backs. Um, you lose Derwin James, which is huge. The guy was a hell of a player. And uh, the Raiders, we see what's going on with them. So it's, it may be a long, another <laughs> long year. And then, you know. the Did Denver- I I'm a Rams fan? Okay, cool. No, you're not a Rams fan. Don't don't let him fool you guys. Uh, <laughs> once and, they go to Vegas next year, well, oh, once the Raiders go to Vegas, you go. Once uh, the Raiders leave Oakland, I'm done with them. I said this that's already. trash. What type of look at what type of fancy? This is what's wrong with the sports world. I've been a fan for like my whole Today, life. 
and I'm just done. Like, what what is the city of Oakland going to look like after the Raiders leave? And he's like one of those.